What's going on everyone? Today we are taking a look at a new portable power station. This is the All Powers R3500. Taking a look at the specs, this has a 3,168 watt hour LifePo4 battery, a 3,200 watt power handling with a peak of 6,000 watts, a 2,000 watt solar charging input, UPS function with a 15 millisecond switch over time, and weighs 93 pounds. Taking a look inside the box, you get the power station itself. You have the user manual and warranty information. Then you have this nice carrying pouch, which has a zipper on it. And inside of that, you have the AC charging cable. There's no charging brick. You just charge directly from the cable, which is always good to see. And then besides that, you have your solar charging connector. So taking a look at the power station itself, this is definitely a nice looking power station. There's a lot of power stations out there that just look like a boring generic battery. It looks like something that came out of the 90s. As you can see, this looks nice and modern, has a nice techy look to it. Overall, a nice and uh, low profile look, and I like this gray and black theme it has going for it. One thing I want to point out is while this is technically a portable power station in the sense that it has a charger, inverter, and battery all in the same package, this thing is not really that portable. As you can see, it's a pretty large unit. And on top of that, it weighs 93 pounds. So as you can imagine, this is very heavy to carry around. I would not want to be moving this regularly. This is something you buy, put in a spot and leave it there and maybe use this to charge other batteries or use as a home backup solution. Or maybe you're someone that works outdoors, maybe a DJ or something like that. You need a whole lot of power, then that might be okay. But for regular camping and stuff like that, I would not want to be using this unit. For that, All Powers definitely has a lot of other power stations that would be better for the task. Personally, I got this because right here where I'm filming, actually, I'm actually going to be building a large shed. And that shed is going to be solar powered. So I'm going to put a whole bunch of solar panels on top. And then this, along with their expansion B3000 battery, what is going to be powering it. That's going to give me a little over 6,000 watt hours. And that should be more than enough along with the solar panels to run an air conditioner or a heater along with any computer and any other equipment I have inside the shed as well. So that's my personal reason for getting this power station here. So taking a look at the ports, one thing I like about these newer all powers power stations is every single port is covered. Always nice to see a lot of these just exposed like this. This leaves it open for either kids to stick stuff in there or just dust and grind to build up in that over time. This is nice and covered so everything can stay nice and clean. So coming up here, you have your USB ports. Right here, you have two USB-C ports. And what's cool is they're both 100 watts. You don't see that very often. Usually you get a 100 watt and then maybe something like a 30 or 60 watts. But as you can see right here, both 100 watts. Below that, we have four USB-A ports. Two of these are 18 watts and then the other two are 12 watts. So a total of six ports in total. So lots of USB ports there. Coming right down here, you have all your AC ports. This one right here is your 30 amp port. And then you have four regular 20 amp ports. Right up here, you have your DC output. So right here, you have your cigarette lighter port, DC jacks. And then right here, you have a 12 volt, 10 amp Anderson output. When it comes to charging, all those ports are on the back. Again, nicely covered. It has a little push area here. Push on that and it pops open. Right up top, you have your AC charging port, which has a 15 amp max. You have your breaker reset button. You have your solar charging input, which has a 40 amp max. And then right down here, you have your two battery expansion ports. All right, so I drained this power station from 100% to zero using about a 1200 watt load, and it put out a total of 2737 watt hours. Doing the math that gives this unit a usable capacity of 86.4%. Most power stations of this size put out about 80 to 85% on average. So this is definitely one of the better units out there. Despite the AC inverter shutting off, it did say there was 5% left. So it looks like it has a safety feature that does not let you run it all the way down to zero. All right, let's go ahead and try out the power inverter on this. As I said earlier, this has a 3,200 watt power handling with a peak of 6,000 watts. That's a lot of power. This is going to be able to handle pretty much anything in your household and still not be able to go over that limit. If you plug in a whole bunch of things to go over it, then maybe. But under regular household usage, this is going to be able to run your air conditioner, microwave, and a whole bunch of other things and still be okay. Even when it comes to power tools, this should be able to handle almost all of them without any issues. I'm not going to bother today hooking up a laptop or cell phone or anything like that because that's just small potatoes for this. Not even worth the time. That's going to take so, so little. You can hook up 100 laptops to this and it's still going to be able to run no problem. 
But let me go ahead and hook up some more powerful things here and see how this handles. All right, so I have an electric heater. I have another electric heater. And then right over here, I also hooked up a 12,000 BTU window air conditioner. So let's go ahead and turn these on one by one and see if we can get it close to that 3,200 watts. All right, so I got the air conditioner on. As you can see, it's starting to rev up. A little bit over 350 watts now. It is pretty cold outside, so it looks like it's actually staying around that 350 watts. But let's go ahead and power on the heaters. So right now I have this heater running on high along with the air conditioner and it's pulling about 1600 watts ish. Well now settling down to about 1500 watts. Let's go ahead and turn on the other heater here. And now we are up to a little over 2400 watts. All right, so I had to add a heat gun into the mix. And as you can see, we are now getting a little bit over 3000 watts, kind of hovering around there. This is the closest I could get it to that 3200 without going over. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this run for about five, 10 minutes and we'll see if it can uh, maintain that load. And before I step away, one other thing I wanna say, you probably can't hear it with all of these fans and heat guns and everything going on, but this is a very quiet power station. A lot of power stations, you barely put on like a thousand or 1200 watts and that fan inside starts blaring. It's just very loud. But even near the max load, this one, the fan is on, but it's definitely one of the most quiet fans in a power station out there. All right, so it's been going for about seven minutes now. It hasn't shut off or anything like that. So as you can see, it definitely does what it's ready to do. Let me go ahead and shut this off. But as a reminder, it was running the heat gun, this heater here, this heater here, and that air conditioner over there. So again, realistically, majority of the time, it's unlikely that anyone is going to be running this at that kind of wattage because again, that is a lot of power to run all at once. All right, so this power station does have app connectivity as well. And this is a Wi-Fi based app. So you don't need to physically be in front of the power station for it to work. I really like this because this means I don't have to go out to my shed and check on its charging status or what percentage is at or anything like that. I can just open this app up from inside my house and I'll see everything that's going on with the power station. Or I could even be across the world for that matter and I'll still be able to see this information. So in the app right here, up top, we have the percentage. You have your input and output. So as I said, from inside my house, I can see at all times of the day what kind of solar input it's getting. And then right down here, you have some toggles to turn on the AC and DC. Coming over to the settings, you have work mode. So right now it's on mute mode. That gives you the slowest charging, about 500 watts. Standard mode was about 1,100 watts. And then on fast mode, despite this only being rated at 1,500 watts charging, I was able to get a charging speed of about 1,575 watts on that. And besides this AC charging, as I said earlier, this has 2,000 watts of solar charging and you could even charge from AC and solar at the same time for a maximum of 4,000 watts, which is an insane number. That'll charge this from zero to 100 within one hour. So if you ever need to top this off very quickly, just hook it up to the solar, hook it up to the AC, and you're gonna have a ton of juice in no time. And then right down here, we have eco mode, which is basically a shutoff timer. So this is gonna be great for my use case where I'm gonna be charging e-bike batteries from this. Usually I'll know they'll be done within three to four hours. So I can just go ahead and set this right here to four hours. And then now the power station's automatically gonna shut off when that e-bike is fully charged. And I don't have to worry about it overcharging or leaving the charger on with the e-bike. So overall, kind of a basic app, but it has everything I need from it. So no complaints there. And once again, I'm very happy that it's actually a Wi-Fi app and not a cheaper Bluetooth app that requires you to physically be near the unit. As you can see here, I also have their 200 watt flexible solar panel. This is model SF200. I'm not gonna hook this up right now because the sun's already going down. It's not gonna have good performance, but I have another one of these that I tested last year and under ideal conditions, I was getting anywhere from 160 to 180 watts. So for 200 watt panel, definitely good performance. So besides this one, I actually have five more of these for a total of six solar panels. As I said earlier, this power station is going to go inside my shed and I'm going to put a bunch of these on the roof to have a total of 1,200 watts of solar charging. Should be more than enough for my usage. Definitely looking forward to trying that out. I don't have the shed built yet, but it should be built in the next month or so. So as I get that set up, I'll definitely do another video to give you guys all an update. 
Overall, this is definitely one of the better power stations out there. I own maybe five or six from all powers at this point, and none of them have had any issues. So when it comes to reliability, all powers is definitely a brand I can vouch for. So if you happen to be looking for a larger capacity power station, then I would highly recommend this one here, which again is the R3500 from All Powers. All right, well, that about wraps up this video. As usual, if you have any questions at all, feel free to drop me a comment and let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.